Ocean Family, it's great to have you on this platform. Good morning and how are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you, Sheila. Good morning to you too. All right. Thank you so much for availing yourself. So today we're talking about the new constitution of the Southern African Catholic Council for Laity, known as your SACCL. Talk to us about this con constitution. Uh, well, the constitution is not necessarily new. It's just uh, another edition or a second edition. The first one was in 2017. This one is now from 2023. It's not completely new. We have just uh, revised a few areas in the Constitution. Uh, the Constitution is basically meant for the Late Council, Southern African Catholic Late Council, SACCL, uh, as a guideline, you know, for how they should be working. And also together with uh, their, their people back at home, uh, because the SACCL is comprised of all the chairpersons from uh, of the diocese and pastoral councils from all the dioceses, so that's how it was formed. So going through this revised constitution, I see that you talk about the identity, you talk about the role of the lay of the lay people, the lay faithful, and you talk about the role of the church as a whole. Let's talk about that aspect of the constitution. Well, the the the, the faithful, uh, the laity, rather, let me say, uh, they they need to know and play their role. And they're supposed to do in church. We talk about their identity so that they know who they are in the church because the church is not only the priests, the bishops, and the religions. We are all of us, the church. So we all have roles to play in the church. So the laity has a greater role to play in, in church. And we we are saying when the late council was started, its duty was basically to liaise between the laity and the bishops themselves. So uh, their duty was to listen to the laity on the ground and come to the late council, discuss things there. Uh, should there be anything that needs to reach the in that body? would pass it on to the bishops, also through us or through me and my co-workers in this group. Also trying to do, we are trying to create, you know, the collaboration, which is in the book that was written some 1994 by the Catholic Bishops Conference. It talks about uh, co-responsibility between the priests and the laity and this is what we also are trying to promote, you know, uh, when we talk to and about the lady. Thank you so much for explaining that to us. But then you have a whole list of aims and objectives. Let us go through some of those aims for those of us that are not familiar with the Constitution. Aims and objectives of the Constitution. Wow, Jela. Uh, what page is that? You have the constitution in front of you, isn't it? That's right. If you look at your page seven and eight, uh, you find that we have uh, about um, eight points, eight points that are looking at some of the aims and objectives. If you can just explain to uh, the lay faithful, the, the lay congregation, uh, what are these objectives, what are the aims in a nutshell, what is expected of the laity? Well, I, I would have to read through some of these points here because I can't, you know, think of them from my head. I mean, this constitution is big enough and too many things in my head. Well, the, as, as you can see, the first aim is to stimulate and coordinate the lay apostolate. Uh, but the name of the department that I'm heading is called the Department for Formation, Life and Apostolate of the laity. Now, uh, that means that the laity has to be formed. The laity has a life to live, 
life in church, life at home, life at their places of work, and uh, the Christian life as such, which they have to carry on uh, even in, at their places of work, even at home. And the second one is to educate the laity uh, of Southern Africa in their responsibilities as defined by the documents of the Vatican II. They have plenty of responsibilities to take on because they are supposed to share you know, the, the, the duties and the responsibilities in church with the priests and the bishops and with everyone else. And as uh, we also have learned that the Vatican II, which was written about 60 years ago, encouraged, you know, this core responsibility and collaboration of the laity with the priests. Something in other places is which is not happening in other places. Mm -hmm. uh, you will find that the priests would either prefer to have one, either one family or two people or three with whom he works closely with. But fortunately, here in the Southern African regions, we have tried to spread as much as we can uh, empower the laity. That is one other way that the laity we're talking about, to empower them. Also to encourage the creation and growth of structures through which lay people can effectively participate in the life and mission of the church. We talk about the mission of the church. Uh, you'll remember the, 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 there was a year which was called uh, sent and baptized, I mean baptized and sent, which, it, which was talking basically about the mission of every lay person, everyone who is baptized is also sent out there to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. And so this is what we are trying to promote also about the late to make them understand that the spreading of the good news does not only uh, is not only the responsibility of the priests and the bishops, it's of all of us, of everybody. One other point it says to focus on the family as the primary source of developing faith, spirituality, and Christian living. You know that uh, nowadays the families are not as they used to be, you know, during our times when we grow, when we used to grow up. Things have changed quite a lot, and so we are also trying to encourage the families to live, you know, those Christian values, the gospel values, and to implant them already at home in the family. Uh, one other point is to help promote discernment of vocations and formation through youth and young adults ministry programs. This is what we are encouraging all those who participate in the Lady Council to do when they get back home, uh, to encourage all these programs to go on and to carry on. Another one says to, en to engage with Christian and non-Christian organizations on matters of mutual concern in order to evangelize the socioeconomic and political realm. Now, uh, when we talk about this evangelization to engage in the Christian, we talk about ecumenism in there. They need to understand that they need to go beyond the borders of being Catholics and the Catholic uh, rules and Catholic teaching. They need to also interact with other people who do not, who are not Catholics. Another one, the seventh one, is to encourage and develop uh, the development of the responsible citizenship and ethical leadership in our sectors. So that is very important uh, because, as we say, they take the gospel to, you know, outside of the church, to the society, in the manner in which we as priests and bishops, you know, cannot because they are spread all over at their working places, particularly ever, even in the society where they live. The last one, it talks about to acquire and disseminate information to the laity on matters of specific interest and to implement the various SACBC and diocesan pastoral programs in collaboration with the clergy in order to integrate faith, culture, and life. Once more, this word collaboration uh, comes in with the clergy. I think this is the biggest thing that we need to embrace in our ministry as priests and bishops, the collaboration with the laity.
All right. Thank you so much. And would you say that these aims and objectives are already being practiced uh, through our lay people throughout throughout the lives of the lay people within the Catholic Church here in this region, that is South Africa, Botswana, Eswatini. Would you say that these aims and objectives are already in place or these are things that you are still going to achieve? If at all, if at all, in a very minimal way, in very few places, these could be practiced because uh, what we somehow have failed in as priests even as bishops, I would say, is to educate the laity in what the church is teaching. And all these values and all these uh, aims and objectives that you talk about here, these are the things we still need to instill into the minds and the hearts of our people. So Archbishop Bambani, in a couple of days, you'll be heading to Rome for the Adlamina visit. And during that Adlamina visit, You'll be visiting different dicasteries, and I believe one of them will be the dicastery for the laity as well. So what are your expectations? What are you looking forward to? Uh, what are you hoping to gain from this uh, Ed Lamina visit? Well, uh, you will remember that in February, we had a meeting in Rome, invited by the very dicastery uh, for, for the laity and life, family and life in Rome where we discussed basically on the collaborative ministry. And when we asked them, because they invited us and invited different speakers from all different countries, as well as people who'd give witness about what is happening in their countries, which was very good. Then we asked them if they have any, you know, blueprint for us or an outline for us, which we can follow as kind of standard operation procedure um, to my disappointment, to everyone's disappointment, they had none. They simply said to us, uh, when you get back to your countries and to your diocese, then you will simply try to implement, you know, what we are saying, this collaborative ministry, the way you see uh, possible and you see best in your diocese. So basically, I personally, I don't expect much from the Castor of Rome because they will simply throw it back to us as they have done before. And they have already done it already now, because we ask them, we only visit you, uh, you know, they ask us what areas would we, would we want to, to hear from. So, and then they said, we must go and present our own, you know, uh, what we do back at home. Then we don't know how much we're going to get from them, but whatever we'll get, to me, it will come as a surprise, and it's welcome surprise too. Well, Archbishop Bambani, thank you so much for your time, and uh, all of the best with the Adlamida visit. We chat again after that. Thank you very much. All the best to you too. Have a good day. Thank you.